Okay, so now that we have the jaw lines identical for each frame, we're going to now go through and try to draw the same expression, but from a side view angle. So I'm going to switch over to my second frame and I'm going to go to my second frame here. And I'm just going to try to focus now on this portion of the mouth to make it look similar to this. Now, I will say when I go inside of these um, facial expressions, my main goal is to try to match not necessarily the height up here, but where it stops at. So you'll probably see me draw guides in different spots just so, so I can have an idea of where the lips end and try to stay on my target area. So the first thing I want to do, if it will allow me, there we go. Let's bring up the lasso tool because I want to manipulate that area right there. And I kind of want to have a guide of right where it's going to come out the nose. Oh, too thick. And you're definitely going to play around with this expressions several times until you get the look that you want. And that's why you want to focus on just getting the look that you want, not necessarily focus on the jawline. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try to get the look that I want first. And then I'll go back through and work on the cleanup. So as you zoom in, you can see there's definitely some cleanup that you will need to do. So I would recommend not focusing on that in the beginning. Just focusing on kind of nailing the same expressions. And as I, you know, fast forward through this portion so that I don't spend a ton of time showing you, um, the entire video clip, I will say out of all of your angles to work on with facial rigging, facial expressions, the side view angle is by far the most challenging angle. And the reason why is because with the front angle, the 315 angle, you can actually get away with just drawing a simple line to represent your mouth whether it's, you know, a sad face or whatever, a simple curve can represent the facial expression and it will look just fine for a cartoon character. However, that same concept goes out the window when it gets to the side view angle. You have to treat this as this character has two lips, top and bottom. And in order for it to kind of make sense, those lips should be there. So um, that was one of the reasons why, I mean, a lot of people, they try to avoid creating the G2 characters. And um, I think with a lot of people, 
the new version of Crazy Talk Animator will be, you know, um, heaven because you don't have to necessarily create a 10 view angle character to be able to get animation you like. However, I actually, I, I love doing G2 characters. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing that is challenging about creating a G, a G2 character is people don't want to start off with a simple character first. I don't care if it's a stick figure. I don't care if it's a, cur a, a character with just a handful of face and mouth expressions. People want to build out a very detailed looking character and um, they focus so much on the design instead of the structure and a lot of this stuff is about the structure first and design second and then the detail of everything last. So when you're, um, you know, you're working on your next character, if you are new to building characters. Um, in my case, I did not know anything at all about Flash. I found Adobe Flash extremely intimidating. Um, I started off with drawing using a mouse and later graduated to using um, a drawing tablet or graphic monitor and each time everything that I've worked on was a huge learning curve and that's why number one you have to want to be able to to do this type of work you know whether it's a hobby it's you know therapy to you to kind of isolate yourself me I love the the process more than I love the money. The money is great because it helps me get new toys. Don't get me wrong. I do like the fact that I can create something. I can put it out there and it actually sells. But overall, I still like the fact that I can create something. So if you're doing this stuff for all the wrong reasons and you complain about it, it, it hinders other people from possibly reaching their goal. It's like be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. This, you know, this type of work is time consuming. It's no different than um, different types of animation, like, um, you know, the stop and go, like the clay animation where someone's just moving a character just you know, just a little speck and stopping and moving it and stopping and moving it. It takes forever just to get a simple gesture. However, they love it. They do it. They spend endless hours on it because that's something they want to do. This is the same thing. Character design, you know, animation. They kind of work hand in hand, but not necessarily. If you're good at animating, then you're going to love 3D animation. Why? Because you don't have to worry about drawing at all. Um, if you're a person like me who still likes 2D animation, this, if you're, if you're animated in Crazy Talk Animator and you're not a person who bought the pipeline because you don't want to create custom content, you're focusing on animation. But if you're a person who's kind of doing both and for me, I did not start off doing both. I started off just drawing. Um, Crazy Talk Animator, when I first got it, was just so I can play around with it. I like the idea of seeing something created come to life. And, you know, I'll never forget the first time I created my first character and to see him move and respond like something that I would see on a regular, you know, TV show, I was blown away. I was sold. And from there on, before that time, I had not picked up a, a pencil and pen to draw since high school. And, you know, I'm currently 
36 years old. So it, it was a big gap um, from from high school to, I think I picked up my pencil and drawing pad about three, three years ago. And it's taken me a while to, to even get to this current level. There's a whole lot about the principles of drawing, the human anatomy, everything. If you want your stuff to look good, study. That's the best I, information I can tell you. And so I am have taken a big step back and I'm learning more about the body structure for both human and animals. And I'm also learning about the core principles of animation so that when I build and rig a character up, I get better results. And that's what it's all about. So as we fast forward through these expressions, um, you will you will see how I still struggle, but when I get to the end and I clean it up, I think, I mean, I'm personally happy with the results that I'm seeing. Okay, so here I am. Um, and I, at this point in time, we have the look that we want. Obviously, there is a ton of cleanup work. Um, I really like my lines to be as clean as possible. So when people do close-ups, it looks nice and clean. So with that being said, just about, well, not just about every single facial expression, although I have the look that I want, as you can see, there is a lot of work to make it look nice and clean. So what we're going to do is at the end of this video, I'm going to stop it one more time while I take my time. And I do mean I take my time, I zoom in, and I try to produce nice, clean, pretty lines because that is the difference with how one person's quality looks versus another person. So I take my time. I do great lines that I'm happy with. And I'm sure over time, I will be even better at doing. But what I'll do is come back to this video and I will show you how the final look of each expression um, will be. So real quickly, I wanted to um, show you the, the final look of the 315 mouth expressions. And this is me after I've gone through every um, expression and cleaned the line work up and finished coloring um, all of the expressions in. And I think um, they show really well for his personality. And they match up very closely to the facial expressions that are done for the 315 angle. Um, this is actually the, the side view, the 270 angle. Um, oh, I skipped one. This one definitely needs to be cleaned up. So, What you want is when you would do an extreme close-up and not to say that you would ever need this much of a close-up, but when you do a close-up, you want your character stuff to look phenomenal. You want to be able to zoom in um, as close as you like since this is a, a vector-based character. And the best way to do that is just to make sure you have clean lines with your work. So. I very much so like to have my characters look nice and clean as possible. And um, it's, it's funny because I used to dread spending time doing and cleaning up my line work. But 
what I've learned over time is um, you see the difference in quality. You'll see um, how much more your character comes to life and looks nice and clean when you take time out and do good work. So um, it's more therapeutic for me. I can, it's nothing for me to just spend um, an hour or two just going over my character with a fine tooth and just seeing any place where um, I can smooth them out. The good thing is, you know, this is a rig character, so what you see is what you get. It's not like a lot of people can come back and just add on to this guy expressions. You can if you know what you're doing, but if you're a person who's buying um, a ready-made character, fully rigged and ready to go, and let's just say you're not an artist, let's say you don't know how to draw well or you know you couldn't make different facial expressions then you're going to rely heavily on the work that's already been pre-made for you and if the quality is not good um you're just less likely to buy from that individual again or um you're a little frustrated because you have character that you like but not a look that you like so this is um let's zoom out a little more so you can see his whole face uh -oh. all right so we'll just continue to go through the expression of 17. I said um, they they all seem to um, come out nicely. They match the 315 expressions pretty well. I mean, I can take time out and kind of do a comparison and at random, and they look pretty close. That it looks like the same expression, but just from a different angle. And um, it, it actually takes a while to get accustomed to drawing the same expression at different angles. It's not going to be exact, but the main thing you want to do is kind of nail the look, so to speak. And you just, you just got to keep at it. You just, just got to keep drawing until, um, which one is this? This one's going to do. This I think is 17. Hold on, I'm going to really fast for this little second. Um, yeah, but you just have to really just keep at it to improve your work. I look at, um, characters that I drew before, especially when I was drawing with a mouse. And I just noticed that the more I keep at it, the better the content seems to come out and the more um, the quality improves. So if you're just getting started at it, just keep with it. It definitely gets better over time. 